Afrotech 2019, Oakland, California. Angelica Nwandu of The Shade Room is on stage talking with Blavity editor Lily Workner about how her company came to be such a pop culture powerhouse. Reportedly, the third most engaging platform on the entire Instagram app for the past two years, while speaking directly and authentically to a largely black audience. So what was the idea for The Shade Room at first? What was it meant to be in 2014? And then I want to talk about how it's evolved over the years. It was meant to be just a side little business. That was the most that I had wanted from it. Hmm. I thought I was gonna have like 100,000 followers and that was the most. Like I didn't see much, it was just a plan B. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't know how to make a website. So I was like, well, I think I was watching some motivation video that was saying, you should start right now, start right now on your dreams, don't delay. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, well, how do I start right now? So, I, so the only thing I could do was open up an Instagram page because that's all I knew how to do. <laughs> I, you know, I didn't have no, any money to pay a graphic, you know, right. a website designer. Um, and so I opened it, and a week later we had 10,000 followers, and I knew from there I was like, oh, it's rolling. Hold up, hold up. In one week, yeah. the week you launched, you got 10,000 followers. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, Deservedly. And right now, years later, she has 17 million followers. Okay, because that deserves a round of applause. Thank you. But that is, you know, a significant number of followers to acquire within one week of launching a new platform, right? So tell us about like what that beginning was like. What was, what was that first week like and how did you acquire that? So the first week I opened the page up, I, I made a little logo, you know what I mean? And I started doing what I love to do. I just started telling, instead of telling my friends, I was telling them. Like, girl, do you know what Chris Brown did? You know, he did this. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh guys, you know, this is what's going on. Like, you know, everything. And then the first day it was 300 followers and I DM'd all of them. <laughs> and I had conversations with all of them. Even to this day, like if you DM the Shade Room, you'll get a response. Like wow. we, we try to respond to every, um, DM because it's so important building that relationship with your audience. Mm -hmm. But I would DM all of them, and so they got personally invested in me because they were like, "We're doing this together. We're building this together." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like she is talking to me. I'm giving her content. She's posting it. I kind of have control over this platform, mm -hmm. and that wasn't something that they felt like they had before. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, after that, talking to them and building this relationship, they took it upon themselves to want to promote this. Mm -hmm. They were like, "Y'all better follow this." Like they would do yeah. it because this was they felt like ownership of. This this platform. I'm Will Lucas, and this is Black Tech, Green Money. I'm gonna introduce you to some of the biggest names, some of the brightest minds, and brilliant ideas. If you're black in building or simply using tech to secure your bag, this podcast is for you. Tuma Boss is director of urban music at YouTube and previously served as a global programming head of hip hop at Spotify, responsible for curating the widely popular playlists, including Rap Caviar, one of the biggest and most popular playlists with over 9 million followers. I asked him about the opportunity black creatives have to capitalize on the global audience of the African diaspora, and if too many of us are missing out. I think tech, a lot of times uh, you hear the word scale a lot, right? And whenever I hear the word scale, it reminds me of when I was in TV and you would hear about hits. We need a hit. This, is this show, is this song a hit? Is this music video a hit? Is this show a hit? So, so in tech, we talk about scaling and getting as many, uh, like, like reaching as many people or the ability to uh, 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 scale. And I, so I think in that, uh, in that kind of, um, uh, uh, not, not, not umbrella, but a blanket, you know what I mean? Sense that we, that we, we fall in that, but, but I don't think, that, I, don't, I don't think that we're specifically in mind. Like, I don't, I, I've, I've never seen that. I've never been like, you know, like only when they're talking about things like diversity, you yeah. know, that's the only time I, I ever, I ever think we're ever in mind. So I think by default, because we're part of the global population, you know what I mean? And yeah, so that's. You no, know, so I, I think about, you know, when, when I see people who are building applications and they're building, you know, these technologies, you know, just I wonder if we consider that there is an audience beyond the states that could be potentially customers or downloaders, users of our applications. Yeah, but but who th and I'm, and I'm being theoretical. Who thinks about us other than us? And then, uh, like, I don't think I don't think any I, I don't think anyone's thinking about us. Uh, like, 
well, they, they, they may be thinking about us in terms of not offending us or, or be including us, but I don't think, I, I think the only people, who, this, is, this isn't some, some scientific or, or research, this is just through observation and right. anecdotal, is the only people who think about, let's say, black people or global black people are black people. Mm. So the thing is this, so I think that the spirit in which we think about us is more important than who is thinking about us. You see what I'm saying? And I don't think we should care, to be honest with you. I think it's about us taking care of, uh, of, of each other and forming each other, building applications for each other. And then the same way somebody builds an application in, let's say, Korea or in India or in Switzerland, and then they, they hope that the whole world uh, catches on. Right. Or they hope that America catches on. Or they hope, you know what I mean? It's China. China. You know, we were seeing TikTok is like huge. It, it, it really is in China. So they hope that the rest of the world catches on, et cetera, et cetera. And I think, I think we should have the same uh, approach. Uh, That's good. Uh, is, is, and, and in hip hop, in music, that is the approach, by the way. Yes. In, in music, that is. In music, like, okay, let's get the streets. Let's let's get the you know what I mean. No. Let, let's get the south or like, and and then if it blows up, that's great. Like um, that's amazing. But if it doesn't, it still uh, it still means something to to like the core uh, uh, base. You know, the uh, uh, black people or even, same thing in Jamaica with dance hall is yeah. like they, they they like a song whether you like it or not. They 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 they, they love it. And, and and you go to you go to Jamaica and they're doing all the dances and et cetera, et cetera. And and, and you're like, what song is this? And right. and they don't care if it caught on in Brooklyn or in Toronto or in uh London. They they like the song. So it's the same thing for us in tech. It's like, hey, we build stuff and then we hope that everyone catches on and we hope that it goes global, you know? Yeah, I mean that's that's so good because I remember seeing I think it was Tyler Perry on uh, Black AF, the show on Netflix, and he was saying like, "Look, I don't make products for people who are not in my core demographic. I make plays and TV shows for British, really black women, and maybe everybody else catches on, but I don't care what the critics say. I made it for my audience." And 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 that, and, and and I think from a creativity perspective that's the best way to do it because then, then you don't get caught up and then you don't lose the, the original uh, attraction or essence of what you do that you remain consistent because you're not trying to please too many people yeah etc cetera, etc cetera. and so i love that i love uh, yeah i love that approach and i respect talent perry for that uh, mindset you know beautiful so um there's this conversation um about getting a label deal that helps me potentially go fast. It's like kind of like getting VC money. You know, if you're building technologies, like getting a deal potentially helps you go faster and it gives you the infrastructure. Um, but in the meantime, you're likewise sacrificing some ownership of that thing. Conversely, me going, you know, building something out of my pocket, me bootstrapping or me going direct to YouTube or TuneCore or CD Baby and distributing myself I sacrifice a little bit of that built-in support, right? And so how do you see this evolving for people who decide to take their product direct to consumer? The thing is this, is when you decide to take a product direct to consumer, you're doing more work. When you make these deals with these record companies or distribution companies, it's you're basically your team up to become partners and they do a lot of the heavy lifting, whether it be marketing or radio promotion or 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 delivery to dsps etc it's a partnership and how much you actually sacrifice depends on how much leverage you have mm -hmm. and 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 and, and the, the terms of that partnership so you don't necessarily always sacrifice there's a lot of people who uh, uh, maintain control i know nipsey hustle had like a joint venture with atlantic which is a major label but he maintained a lot of all money and retained a lot of control in terms of the decision making, in terms of timing, in terms of so much, like right, it was a partnership. It was a partnership, uh, but because he, he came in with leverage, um, not everyone uh, comes in at the same stage or and and is, uh, has the ability to negotiate that type of autonomy or or, or influence on their project. Um, 
So there are people who do operate like independents uh, within those big uh, label systems. And then there are people who, who are independent, but they, uh, they, 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 they don't act like an independent, like, you know, who, you know, in, in terms of uh, the do it yourself, you know, the, 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 there's something else. Uh, there's another force behind it. Um, yeah, that's a, that, that's controversial though. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, but to to that point, like you know, if you think about the days of like Master P and No Limit and Cash Money, you know, they had this direct to consumer model, like, and they were selling out of their trunks. So that how do you how do you build if if you if you can go down this road because I I I'm sensitive yeah, to yeah. said you don't want to go. No, down no, 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 no. Actually, this is uh, this is uh, very interesting what you're saying because I I've, I've, I've thought about I, I think I know where you're going. So basically, so when you're talking about um, Master P, I just had this conversation where Master P and these guys, what they did was um, the CD-ROM, right, was the big innovation where yeah. they didn't have to depend on the record labels and um, in New York or, or in Los Angeles to, to print out these uh, CDs, right? So they go make their own CDs. They make their own artwork. Remember the pen and pixel? You know, instead of doing everyone's uh, album art, I remember. And 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 you know, they may not have retail space. Or well, Master P happened to have retail space. He had a record store in Richmond, California, in the Bay. He, a lot of people don't know. No Limit started as a No Limit Records in the Bay, yes, yes. and then he moved back to New Orleans. So, so what happens is, so these guys uh, sell out the trunk of their car because they don't have uh, uh, warehouses to to hold inventory retail space so they became mobile uh retail outlets right they did it themselves gain enough leverage where they could strike deals uh with these uh um, distribution companies and they don't have to do it themselves they can now they can focus on their creativity they can focus on their on on on, on things like imaging and things like uh, getting features etc etc so long story short that same exact thing happens now and, and it's young kids, and we kind of look down on those young kids where they use YouTube, where they use SoundCloud, they use uh, TikTok, yeah. they use to create buzz. And it's the same as the CD ROMs. Like, okay, uh, now all I need to do is get my music out there to create, uh, to build an audience. Because what Master P and them and Cash Money had was they had an audience, whether it was Juvie or UNLV with um, uh, No Limit or and Master P with himself and True and and Silk and uh, C Murder, you know what I mean, etc. Yeah. etc. They they had audience, and that's what that's that's why these other uh, the priorities of the world and the universals of the world um, did these deals with these guys, right? Like, so the thing is, is the same exact thing happening on the on the web now. Is and the problems is a lot of times is little young kids, so we look down on them as if they don't know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. They're figuring it out just like everyone else, you know. And, and, and they're taking advantage of uh, these barriers to entries, you know? Uh, no, it's good. Yeah. And, and you know what the next one is? You want to know what the next one is? I'll give you a, a, a jewel, a gem, whatever right yeah. now. Next thing is the kids who figure out monetizing live streaming. That's, 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 that, the, 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 that's the, the kids who figure that out, right? Whether it be through product placement, whether it be through pay gating, whether it be through um uh things like super chats on youtube which is like um super chats is big in the gaming world and it's right. big in like japan and south korea so where you pay to see your comments to be seen or you pay for stickers it's, it's very much a part of k-pop fandom and it's very much part of video the video gaming world but it just hasn't uh, extended to music yet uh tory mm -hmm. lanes is the only one well tory lanes is the only major artist who's used it so far and everything uh uh in the u.s at least in the u.s and canada uh uh he's the only one uh that the, the major artist who's used it um right. that i know of. well there's, there's others there's others but uh but like the major major like you know, right et cetera, et cetera, you know so I, I think about so everybody's got everybody's live on instagram every time i pull up my instagram everybody's live yeah. right and everybody has you know, videos on YouTube and everybody's an influencer or wants to be an yeah. influencer. And, but you said before in a different interview, like it's, it's not enough to work hard anymore. Like you have to decommodify. Right. And in your, yeah, exactly. yeah. in your experience, you said it better than me. 
<laughs> so, so in, in your experience, like what's been consistent about those people who have been able to break through? I think uh, it's, here, I'm going to steal, I'm going to steal the answer. And, and this is an answer I, uh, I, I, I got from a Steve Heyman who manages Beyonce. I saw him speak once and it blew me away. And, and somebody asked him about Beyonce. And one of the things he said was her intent. Like her intent was always to deliver, to like be high quality. Her intent was always to emotionally connect. Her intent is to teach. Her intent is to just go hard. You know what I mean? Every time, championship level. And 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 after watching the last ten episodes of Last Dance, um, the 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 documentary series, yeah. I saw. I was like, oh, wait, Michael Jordan is kind of the same way. And the, the other people who kind of gravitated, like their intent was to win a championship. Like he was pure like they knew exactly what they wanted and went for it and 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 i think that um a lot of people along the way forget about the original intention or the intention that got them to where they are right or, to, or that helped them break yeah through the 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 commodities through the through the the sameness the the um homogen homogeneity of work yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah exactly yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> Yeah, or monotony. Let's 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 say monotony. Okay, I'm with monotony, it. I'm with it. Right. So let's quote Fresh Prince. He's a consistent one. Will Smith is a consistent one. Remember in the summertime, it's like it helped you break through all this yeah. hardcore dance. Uh, this monotony that's a little bit out of control. You remember? Yeah, that? Yeah, so let's yeah. quote him. So what happens is this is uh, um, so what happens is people forget. People literally uh, uh, forget. And they become formulaic, right? Mm. Because it worked this time. So instead of trying something new or something fresh, they just want to maintain. They're just, they're just, they're just, they're, 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 they're uh, playing it. You know, in the sports, when you're, um, you're, you're running the clock down, right, right. Like, you know, you're not really trying to win. You're just trying to keep the score as is. So, you, yeah. so they're just trying to keep the status quo. They're just trying to keep the score. So, so the people who don't do that who keep playing and who, who pace themselves out so that they don't burn out by the time, you know what I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the ones who um, who consistently break through the clutter, consistently, wow. you know? And we can name them. Like this, this is music, we can, this, is, this is a handful, just a handful, you know? And other ones, they disappear eventually, you know? Yeah, it's, it's so it's crazy that you bring up like the last dance because I was reading an article yesterday about Dennis Rodman and his impact on the culture of a lot of artists today. Like he broke the mold for people to be little Uzi verts and young thugs and to yeah. break down that gender dynamic. Kanye. Kanye. Kanye also. Yes. I saw someone on Twitter talking about Kanye and Dennis Rodman and, and the hair colors and the faces and the, and, and the, the, the people that Kanye has dated. You know what I mean? Like uh, and comparing Dennis Rodman with Kanye. And yeah. so, and, and Dennis Rodman was Chicago. So that's his era, like the, the direct, and then and Kanye influences so many people, That's uh, right. so many young people, directly or indirectly. We we, we can see it. You know, we are open eyes. We often talk about the lack of equity creatives realize from place in our work whether it be our music, our dance, our jokes, or hot takes on social media platforms. And in return, don't get the ear of those companies that capitalize on our contributions. I asked him about how black artists and techies alike can monetize our creative genius. I think that's on, the burden's on us, you know what I mean? Like, because well, we build these platforms and, and, and we're content with social capital, you know what I mean? So, uh, that, which is likes and followers and, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, et cetera. And, and, and people seeing this and saying calling that one the influencer etc cetera, etc cetera. i think portability is a big thing there is are you building uh the messaging and who you are and or what you stand for just the same as a brand is that portable to other platforms uh if i go to another place that also has uh, the same amount of attention or whatever am i gonna have an equal yeah one of the things i used to do i used to get in the heads of um artists back in the day 
they were big on another platform, like, oh, okay, are you doing well on there? Let's see how you do with the big boys over here. This mm-hmm. is the pros. And and and, and if, if, you, if you have enough influence or connection with your quote unquote followers that they migrate to the, another platform you're at, if your call to action is, uh, hey, come uh, support me here or come listen. And it's the same thing. It's the same thing with uh, so 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 how you handle this. If you're just showing your ass and 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 you get all these followers or you get all these thing is you're gonna have to show your ass at the other platform, etc. Yeah. etc. But if you're there's if people are actually connecting with you and the buy-in is with you, right? Then the the, the the like I want I want whatever whether it be inspiration, whether it be comedy, whether it be great music, whether it be um uh intellect you know mm-hmm. like i'm getting that from this and i want that so i will go you know what i mean yeah and, and that's how people monetize to be honest with you that's how people monetize the thing about it is i'm giving you these great mixtapes for free for right. nothing right and when right. it's time to formalize when i'm putting out an actual body of work that's uh, put it in production etc cetera, etc cetera, or i'm going on tour I'm testing your willingness to pay. Okay. Right. And I'm hoping that I've done a great job in giving you the love, right? Like the love meaning no out of pocket um, right, right. Uh, price. You know what I mean? No out of pocket price. And, 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 and when we're put in a situation where you do have to pay, we're going to find out who the real revolutionaries are. Like, you know what I mean? Like uh, to quote Bob Marley, you know, to quote Bob Marley. Like we're gonna find out who's really willing to pay, who's really. Uh, uh, I always use Lil Wayne as an example. Who's a real Weezy, a Lil Wayne fan? Because I thought he mastered that a uh, 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 freemium model, the freemium model. You know what I mean? He yes. ma- he mastered that. He mastered that when back in the day when he did all those car three, um, droughts and gangster grills. He mastered it so well. So it's like okay now, so so the equity is not necessarily having equity in the platform having brand equity that 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 you are your whether it be your brand or your service or your product that it creates a connection or a relationship that your um audience or followers or stakeholders um are willing to migrate to another platform you see what i'm saying and that's the real test of a brand you know I was I was talking to a friend and we were talking about like George how George Lucas knew with Star Wars that the content was just the gateway to get you into this whole rabbit hole of products and ex- other experiences. And so when you I don't know if you've been to Disney World, Disneyland, but like you know it's like when you go to to have the experience of you go let's say the, let's say the Frozen Castle, you go into the Frozen Castle to meet with one of the princesses, right? And as soon as you walk out, you're they they have got the toy there for you to buy so the movie is the gateway to get you to go the, the the experience the experience leads you to buy the product and so the 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 content has always been like the gateway since people like george lucas has, have innovated on that concept i wonder if you, number one if you agree with that that philosophy but number two if you do how does the work you do allow creators to monetize their artistry well, the work I currently do, the work I've done, the work I've, I I do. And Just talk talk about your experience overall. Experience? Okay, uh, I can talk more in the past because the work I do now is a little bit different in terms of it's more of enabling or empowering through information or access uh, and uh, best practices. You know, uh, uh, letting uh, partners know or letting people internally. Uh, so I call I call I call. I call um, uh, one of my uh, colleagues was do, breaking down like different uh, duties for different people. Like, listen, listen, uh, and I said, and they were like, "What do you want to call yourself?" I said, "Call me the cultural attaché, right?" Mm. And, and this is why this, this, I said this to him. I was like, because I've always kind of looked at myself as when I'm in a company, right? I'm an ambassador to the culture within the company representing and making sure that opportunities are available or that our importance is understood right and, and 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 in a way that's not in a protest way not protest nobody owes anyone anything yeah. it's just like it's like hey in a, in a way that's coming like with 
uh, as peers, as equals. Like, look, look, this is what we can add, how we can add value. Do you want this value? No, okay. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. If yes, okay, then let's do this, let's do this. Let's compound this value. Let's continue this, uh, these relationships. Let's, let's, let's make this as friendly to uh, um, our world as possible. Yeah. Uh, and but 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 when you talk about George Lucas and the way he views it as like a as a gateway, I always looked at things like MTV Jams or Rap Caviar or or, or BET back in the day. I, BET, of course, I was entry level. I was a junior. Um, uh, uh, at, but as vessels, yeah, right. So and when I say vessels, is is that those same songs. Uh, that were played on the playlist or on a TV station or on a, or even on the radio or wherever, or, or let's say in a magazine, right? If you look at it as a vessel, you can apply those same, the same principles or, or spirit or meaning in other ways. You can apply that to live events. Like, you know, this is the same. We just lost um, Andre Harrell. Right. And uh, Andre, Andre, Andre was like, I mean, he was very dear to many people. But one of the things that he liked to talk about a lot was um, uh, ghetto fabulous. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's right. Like, he's fabulous. like, I created ghetto fabulous. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I created ghetto fabulous. So what? But what the thing is this? So, so, so he would, like if you got to know Andre. I, I love talking to Andre. He's one of the best people to talk to because you learn so much and he's like so. It was so fun to talk to. And and, and he'll give you examples. He'll he'll give you examples of people like yeah so and so so and so yeah that brand that 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 has that, that no that's not Gil fabulous that's this that's street that's yeah, uh yeah. that's uh, hipster that's uh you know what i mean it's uh, this is that well he, he liked that so what happens is this so what what um george, when you're talking about george lucas and i'm um, talking about all these other uh, platforms because that's what these are these are platforms what you do with it is is what determines how people connect with it or react to it or reuse it or or build on it or because because you're asking people for their time and their attention you know yes, yes. so what happens is so what what george lucas is talking about is uh is if you have let's say a playlist but those same artists those same songs you can also do live shows if you have a visual identity like a logo you can also Put it on hats. Right. You can also, you know what I mean, like things that fit the lifestyle. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna give you an example. Please. When I was at, when I was MTV, when I was MTV, um, so if you remember, MTV Jams used to have horrible commercials. These like Cash for Gold and uh, Pillow Pets, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Right. Right. Horrible. <laughs> like horrible. It used to cheapen the brand. They're like 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 you, you put it on mute as soon as those commercials came on. You know what I mean? Put on me. They were called direct response commercials. And one of the things that I remember when Wiz Khalifa and Currency started coming up, and the whole wake and bake thing, is I remember a uh, uh, thing, and I pitched it. It got shot down. Shot down. Is like we make our own kind of products that a direct response that you can call one eight hundred number to call, etc. You know what I mean? And 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 make money off of that. So I remember bringing Big Oom Spray. You know what Big Oom Spray is? No, I don't. Big Oom, so Big Oom, he used to own these mixtape stores in Atlanta, right? I, I met Big Oom in 1998 or 1999, Impact Nashville um, uh, Music Conference, right? Him and DJ Jelly, I met them both. And 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 the, for a long time, the early days, they were my 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 cultural touch points in Atlanta. Like they would go That's buy right. uh, you know mixtapes or then later on DVDs. But something Big Oom used to give me it was Big Oom spray, right? And and my grandmother, who doesn't speak English, right? Yeah. She uh, uh, liked the Big Oom spray. Like she, she would ask, "Hey, can you send me some Big Oom spray?" Like she doesn't even speak English. She lived in Alabama. With my, my my parents live in Alabama. My uncle and aunt and stuff. So she stayed with my uncle and aunt in Alabama. Didn't speak English. Yeah. But she knew Big Oom spray. So I remember going to MTV and pitching. Big Oom Spray for because the advertising market was going down, so they needed like non advertising de uh, dependent uh, right. ideas like let's say uh, VH1 cruises or you know what I mean tours yeah. etc. And I pitched Big Oom Spray. I was like, yo, like 
the big ones, right? And and the reason and here it's all coming full circle. The whiskey for the currency thing yeah. is is people used to use it to spray if to kill the odor of weed. Oh wow! Right, and then yeah. this is before weed was weed was still a little bit taboo. It wasn't as normalized as it is now, or as yeah. legalized as it is now. This is so he had ten, Febreze before Febreze. Yeah, but, but I mean that's what people used it. I don't know if that was his original intention, but people used to use it like like oh in the car or you know in the bedroom or or if you could use it for the bathroom, it would kill the odor. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, I was like, I was like, I told him, I was like, yo, look. If you can get rid of some of these, um, uh, these direct response, horrible infomercial feeling commercials, and we make our own promos and we uh, and we sell products that fit the culture, like Big Um Spray, right, right, and 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 and, and use spokespersons like a, a currency or a, or a whiz at the time, you know what I mean, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then literally, I kid you not, we're going to sell a boatload of these things because uh, we have a attentive audience, but we're polluting the channel with these irrelevant ads. Just and 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 from them, they don't even care about the audience. They're just bottom feeding because these are the cheapest rates because we're devaluing what what's happening because because all your you're basing your pricing and inventory is based on. Your pricing inventory is based on reach because MTV Jam is only 20 million homes. So we're de- they were devaluing it based on reach, not based on influence or not based on uh, how dope it was, etc. And then they shut it down. They laughed at me, actually, to be honest. With you. And I didn't have enough seniority in the room to like to make it happen. So I just let, let it go. But it, but it, the, my whole point was George Lucas's approach is the same thing where he was like, yo, there's so many different vessels. This can be a vessel. Right, and, and all I need is the visual identity. You know exactly this is a Yankees right. cap. You know that's what right. this means. Yeah. So, so it's it, it, that's, but that's what I'm talking about. So, what this is what you're talking about is uh, what he's talking about Star Wars. Harry Potter did the same thing, where it, Harry Potter was a book. That's it right. was a, a Harry Potter was a book. It was uh, Halloween costumes. It was an experience. It was a movie. I, I'm guessing it was a cartoon, but guess who the most interesting, uh, uh, the person who just did it really, in the, in, and she killed it, Michelle Obama. Hmm. The Coming. The Coming was a book. Oh, the Coming yeah. was a Netflix series. That's right. The Coming was a tour. That's right. was a, Becoming was a tour. <laughs> and, 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 and she's still on her Becoming a, a Blitz. She did it just as good as George Lucas or the, the Harry Potter lady. The, uh, she's still doing these fundraisers with like D nice or the graduate with me stuff on YouTube and all that stuff. You know what I mean? And, 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 and she's still on the becoming blitz. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so yeah, well, yeah. So that, yeah, that's all. I'm sorry. That's great. That, no, that's, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 No, I respect Michelle Obama. I was like, okay, she's getting paid. <laughs> and she did this right. She sequenced this right too. You know what I mean? She exactly. and she hit the spot. She was doing like arenas in Edmonton, Alberta. You know what I mean? She she went in. She 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 put in her work. Um. So you are director of urban music at YouTube now, and so yeah, but that's, yeah, but that's just the title. Uh, the, I get it. You know what I mean? But I'm, yeah. so so like the reason I bring that up is because how do we understand the value of our offering, recognizing that our perspective. Like Jay's host said, like nothing moves without us. Nothing. Yeah. And so if that's true, how do you see your role and people who are building things and people who are amplifying our culture? Um, how do you see the impact so that we can recognize the power we have? Well, I think I think I think we know the impact. I think in a recognition of the impact is not uh, the recognition for us, we know. The recognition is sometimes with these big companies or big institutions, etc. And the way we can do that is to populate uh, uh, these uh, institutions or uh, or companies or you know, and 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 not um, not villainize them. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Look at them as like, hey, like look at them as possible, whether it be partners, right, with partners or or um, and 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 and, and it has to create some accountability where where like oh no th- these are like they they bring so much business or et cetera et cetera because that's how these companies or institutions think you know is 
they measure everything. And, and, and like, they look at things as market share and pies, graphs, right. pie charts and graphs and, and spreadsheets and, you know, et cetera. And, that, and so what happens is uh, uh, so, to, to build leverage, that, that's the only way, internally and externally. That's the only way, that's the only way. Like, you know, understand, to understand how they operate. Like, and because I don't, I think we recognize it. Uh, we don't always do. We don't. Oh, oh, you want? Oh, you? I know what you want. You want how to work around? Yes. That's what you want. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yes. I see. I see. I see in your eyes. I see it in your eyes. All right. Well, then, 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 then it's the age-old answer of building our own uh, ecosystems. And I, and I, and I, and again, I'm gonna I'll give music some credit because. Uh, when I was coming up, you had the Rockefellers and you had the Bad Boys, you had the No Limits, you had, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, all these, yeah. Uh, and it, you had those, right? But you also had other ecosystems. You had DJ coalitions, whether it be um, heavy hitters or or uh, what those other coalitions, uh, coalition DJs or core DJs, right. Tony Neal, right. core DJs. Um, DJ Big X, Coalition DJs in Atlanta. You had all these different ecosystems. You had clubs. I love Atlanta. love Atlanta because Atlanta is an ecosystem, right? Mm -hmm. And an ecosystem, it's, it's, it's a with or without you ecosystem. Let's call them a with or without you ecosystem. Like That's what we're talking that's right. about, right. um, Al Parrott earlier. So Atlanta is a with or without you ecosystem. You can be with them. They're, they're going to work with you or without you. That's right. Just, that's so right. they're not going to stop. They have enough, there's enough support. There's enough different moving parts, whether it be studios, nightclubs, put strip clubs in there, DJs, uh, radio stations, urban radio stations, including black owned uh, radio stations. I know Steve Hedgewood um, owns like Streets 104.5. Uh, and then Kathy Hughes, I think owns right. uh, Hot 107.9 uh, in Atlanta. And, oh, you're in Cleveland, uh, Bill Black. The, the, yes. you, know, you know what I mean? You know, right. the DJ Bill Black. That's my guy. That's my guy. So, so is is so you have enough. So it's a with the thought. So we have to take Atlanta, that microcosm, and and apply it as a whole. And so what happens is so that these companies uh, 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 who outsource a lot of different type of uh, uh, functions or think are, are kind of have to come to you. You see what I'm saying? They have to go through you because you're going to operate with or without them. And if, and if we're too dependent, if we're too dependent, like, oh, no, please, please, please. Then we're going to, we're in a position of weakness. We're not in a position of strength. So, so being in a position of strength is you're going to do it anyway. And so one of the things I love about artists, the type of artists that you were asking about earlier is they're going to blow up anyway. You see what I'm saying? Like the, a, a Drake, like if you go inside the mind of a Drake or go inside the mind of a Nipsey Hussle or go inside the mind of a uh, name, a, a, a Jay-Z, he was going to do it anyway. You see what I'm saying? All the people along the way. Yeah. His, it was in his mind. So, 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 so if we have th th those mindsets of, 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 of successful um, people or successful brands or et cetera, et cetera, that figured it out and figured out how what, what their value proposition was and how to uh, uh, capitalize on that value. Uh, they, they have that mindset. They're gonna, all right, like it, it doesn't work with you. We're not gonna burn bridges, maybe next time. It, it, yeah, and those are the best people to deal with. It's like, it didn't work out. Maybe, but we're not gonna be mad at each other or et cetera. Maybe next time, we'll, we'll keep the doors open. Tech Green Money is a production of Blavity Afrotech and is produced by Morgan DeBond and me, Will Lucas. With additional production support by Love Beach, Stephanie Ogbogu, and Raven Nirobor. Special thank you to Micah Davis and Sakara Savanyan, you know, like the wine, and yes, that's his real name. Learn more about Tuma Basa and other tech disruptors and innovators at afrotech.com. Go get your money. Peace out.
peace and love. Mm-hmm.